and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Again, we are drinking Cannibal Farmhouse. <laughs> it's a French farmhouse. Today we're going to be talking about 1963's Dementia 13. And this one is a request from Andy Riggs. This is the first film directed by Francis Ford Coppola, legendary director. We don't need to say what he's done, a master at his craft. It stars William Campbell, and he is in tons of these B-horror movies produced by Roger Corman. He was also in the original Star Trek twice, <laughs> once as Trelane in The Squire of Gothos, and also as Koloth in Trouble with Tribbles. He then reprised the role of Koloth in Deep Space Nine. Which is fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Luana Anders is in this. She's a Corman mainstay. And Patrick McGee, of course, is in this. And he was in Tales from the Crypt. Dishwater. And uh, Clockwork Orange. More <laughs> wine. <laughs> He's all being carried around by fucking David Prowse there. <laughs> Dementia 13 starts off with this couple rowing a boat on yeah. the lake in the middle of night for some reason <laughs> john halloran is doing the rowing and he's telling his wife louise that basically his mother is rich when she dies she plans on just donating all of her money to a charity she's kind of not cool with this <laughs> bit of a heated argument and as he's rowing i guess the, between the rowing and the arguing he has some heart attack <laughs> and as he's kind of dying he tells her if i die before you you get nothing. Yeah. Then he just dies. <laughs> so what does she do? Responsible wife just dumps him, <laughs> dumps the body in the fucking lake, goes home and writes a fake letter from him to his mother saying, I'm going away on business. Louise is going to come and visit. She goes and visits his mother and the family in Ireland. She's rich. She has this big castle oh, in man. Ireland, Castle Halloran. Love to own a castle. Oh, oh fuck. God. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Little drafty, but yeah. I'm sure it'll be, besides that, it'll be awesome. You could get into the king's wine cellar and everything. <laughs> we meet the family here at Castle Halloran. John has two brothers, and one of the brothers has a fiance. We also find out they had a sister that accidentally drowned seven years ago. And the mother is still super distraught about this. They hold some sort of ceremony once <laughs> a year to kind of like remember her and pay tribute to her. Yeah. And every year it's the same thing. Mother goes and puts flowers on the grave and faints. Yeah. Oh! Oh, it happens every year. <laughs> and the mother claims that as soon as she put the flowers on the grave, they died instantly. Louise sees that the mother is mentally unstable and kind of wants to take advantage of this. She takes all these dolls that were in Kathleen's old room, have them come up into the water to kind of scare her mom. Scuba dives, she, she sees like a tombstone almost. It says, forgive me, Kathleen, a corpse. And she freaks out and comes up. She looks up, feet standing there with an ax that comes and raises and just kills her. There's a poacher that's been wandering on the ground, starts seeing things in the woods. He starts to kind of follow. An ax comes out of nowhere and just chops him right up and chops his head right off. <laughs> and you see his whole head come off and go rolling away. Like, holy shit. Meanwhile, the doctor is starting to get pretty inquisitive. He's asking a lot of questions about the family. He also takes one of the brothers to a, the local pub, too, to try and get more information. Getting the brother all drunk, too. Yeah, like drink up. <laughs> yeah, drink up. He's getting all that brandy. Looks like a nice pub. I'd want to drink there. <laughs> yeah, me too. He learns that the brother ended up having a little bit of a mishap with the sister. Ended up dying. There's a wedding that's going on, too, with one of the other brothers. Everybody's all having a good time, and... The doctor's all around asking more yeah, questions. Pissing and... everybody off. <laughs> yeah, like Columbo. Yeah, yeah. I know you don't <laughs> like me, but... Uh, yeah, he's super like Columbo. Yes. Yeah. Everybody's all annoyed yeah, by him. Yeah. He ends up getting away from the wedding party, the festivities, and he gets into this, like, this outbuilding, this shed. Finds the body of Kathleen, this wax figure. Looks like she's been perfectly preserved. That's where we're going to end the plot. So if you want to see what happens in Dementia 13 with the family, 
with this axe burger who's running around, and with the doctor, keep watching. As we mentioned before, this is Coppola's first movie, and it's produced by Roger Corman, the king of the B movie. <laughs> yeah. Coppola had worked with Corman before as like a sound guy. Like a lot of people, they get their start working for Roger Corman, and you kind of go up the ranks, right? Yeah. Jack Nicholson did it. <laughs> oh my God! Don't stop now. A lot of people did it. Corman wanted to make a, a kind of a psycho ripoff type movie said, yeah, write me a script. Yeah. Coppola wrote the script in one day and sent it to Corman. He's like, okay, here's $22,000. Go make the movie. You can tell by watching this that it is somebody who knows what they're doing. It looks better than most cheap B Corman movies. It's got something a little extra, something special. Yeah. It's got the it factor to yeah. it. You can tell that Coppola's hungry yeah. at this point. And right? he's more of a visionary. He's not just putting the camera up and shoot it like he's coming up with neat shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He's doing things different, right? Yeah. The movie was actually filmed in Ireland, which is actually quite amazing because they could have filmed it really anywhere. Yeah, seeing they want to make it cheap, yeah. Why go to Ireland and spend money flying people over and equipment and all that stuff? It makes no sense, but I mean, Coppola, I guess, really wanted the authenticity of it, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it kind of does show. Like, you see the actor's breath and stuff like that, like, it's cold. It helps with the whole sort of haunted castle setting. And it is a great setting. Like, I love those old castle oh, settings. It's, yeah. it's so good. You're right, the fact that they actually went the extra mile miles yeah, yep. to shoot in Ireland helps because you really get that cold feeling that big haunted castle like yeah you're right they could have shot it anywhere yeah. but it wouldn't have been as effective if they should just shot it in some farmhouse in Ohio or something yeah, right like yeah, it's, exactly yeah that Ireland setting really helps yeah the mystery of this movie is great murder mystery right yeah. and you throw in the money well you got a perfect reason and the dead daughter which could be a ghostly type thing so you got the murder the money the ghost the haunting you got a perfect horror movie it's a good here. stew <laughs> brewing here. Yeah, exactly and the mystery starts from the get-go like from the first scene well you know that she's not in the will yeah was this by chance a heart attack or did she have something to do with inducing this heart attack yeah you don't you really don't know. really know you never Honestly, you never really find out. Nobody else in the movie knows that he's dead. No. Not, no. No, no one knows. <laughs> no. No one ever finds out he's dead. <laughs> His wife did a great job of covering it up, but then she kicks the bucket too. Yeah. So then that whole segment... That whole storyline is, is done. Is dead. Yeah. 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 Which is neat, because you think she's the main character. And Nope. She's the first one to die, which is a great twist, right? Exactly. So then you know that it's not Louise doing anything. Right. It's somebody else. For 1963, the kills in this movie are... Oh, yeah, they're fucking great. 80 slasher kills. 20 years before, there were 80 slashers. Axe murderer fucking chopping people up. You see the heads rolling. Hitchcock couldn't even go there for Psycho. Three years later, they can show heads coming right off and rolling away. It's yeah. like, holy fuck. And it looks good for 1963, man. That's pretty good. Like, the only movie I can think of that is much gorier than this in this time period might be Night of the Living Dead. Ahead of its time in more ways than one. I really think this is the prototype to 80 slashers. Axe murder, you got good kills. You got that scene with the poacher, 80 slasher, like, he's gonna get it. You know he the is. The bumbling idiot. Mm -hmm. But when is he gonna get it? That whole, yeah. like, oh, that guy's gonna get killed. But yeah. when? You're, I can't think of a movie before this where that kind of happens, where you're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, know it's a good, you know it's gonna come. Interesting that, like, a master director like Francis Ford Coppola goes on to do these brilliant movies also laid the prototype for shitty B-movie 80s slashers. Hey, yeah. The cast is fucking great, too. And they all deliver perfectly. They all have something to add to the story, nice and concise. Yeah. Because it's the movie's only an hour and 15 minutes long. Super short, yeah. And it's exactly what it needs to be. Each one of them gets their own little mystery piece. Any one of them can be the killer. Because they all have a motive, because yeah. they all want money. They all want mom's money. And when you look at the doctor, what he adds to the movie, 
He's almost a little bit like a Loomis character. He is the Loomis character. In Halloween, right? Because he's kind of hunting. He's kind of waiting. Yeah. Right? He knows somebody in the family is doing this. Yeah. He's a family doctor. <laughs> exactly. And he's got to go and get one of them, you know? <laughs> he's got the gun. He's fucking yep. ready to shoot it. Yep. I shot him six times! <laughs> This man, he's, he's not, not a human. human. Patrick McGee steals the show. Yeah, he does. He is so good as being that kind of inquisitive, pissing you off type Columbo character. Yeah. Really is what yeah. he is. Pain in the ass, but I love how he means business though. He's right. Like he's serious. Yeah, he's there to solve a fucking problem. They're all good, but he really steps it up. If you didn't have Patrick McGee, I don't think that the movie would have felt no. as important. No. Especially with the ending, right? It fucking delivers. Exactly. He, he is the delivery, right? Yeah, and so. it, it really is like the Donald Pleasance, because yeah. if Halloween didn't have Donald Pleasance, it wouldn't have felt the same. Right. It's yeah. exactly the same. The score for this movie, again, is really good, and it's, it's haunting, and yeah. it's ear-piercing. These those strings and everything is like, you're like, Oh, like, yeah. fuck! That like, out of tune yeah, like, harpsichord oh, like It really shit. makes you feel uneasy. And, and it's supposed to, yeah. right? It does its job. The camera work in this is really good. For a B movie, you can tell Coppola is positioning the camera in a specific way to make you feel a certain way. It's all thought out. He's doing things for a reason. It's yeah. not just set it up, shoot, and cut yeah. it. It's kind of an important movie, you know? It, it, yeah, it's important in horror. Yeah, it set a lot of standards, I think. In B horror, it's you know, it's not psycho. Yeah. It is the B psycho, which is what, what it was supposed to be. It would be an A-list movie if it yeah. wasn't for cutting some corners here and there. Yeah. Exactly. But that's what Roger Corman was known for. So, how can it be a Corman movie without cutting corn? <laughs> yeah. So, if you want a good classic movie that really started a trend, yeah, to see where it all began without Dementia 13. There may not be a Halloween. Yeah, or a Friday the 13th. Right. right. So if you want to see where that all started, check it out. Yep. And certainly give Psycho a run for its money. Yeah. And until next time, keep drinking. Keep drinking.